The more hits we play, the more hits we get. URLradio.net. Stacey Stern. Kevin Kyes. Okay, top eight rock, rock albums of all time. Rock opera albums. <laughs> That'd be quick list. <laughs> I know two. <laughs> yeah. Tommy? <laughs> yeah, that's about it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I would I would say okay. Um, I would go out uh, as far as saying uh, twenty twenty first century breakdown. Oh, that is a very story driven album. You're right. Yeah, I would say Sergeant Pepper too would be like a rock album. Yep. Hmm. Queensrÿche Operation Mind Crime is a rock opera. I'm going to Google the intro. <laughs> I'm going to do that one too while we're going through this one here. Yeah. Provided my internet's work. My internet's have been hit or miss as far as whether they're going to work. But here are the actual rock albums okay. of all time. Coming in at number eight, Deep Purple Machine Head. Oh, sure. I mean, that's, that, yeah. that's, the, that's the album that... Uh, that uh, Started a lot of it. Yeah. yeah. Smoke on the Water's on, I believe. Yes. Mm-hmm. Number seven, Grateful Dead, Working Man's Dead. Sure, but yeah. I, Rolling I, Stone I, I, readers voted it as their favorite in a magazine poll. Really? Yes. All right. Um, so that's one of the criteria. Top rock opera albums. Okay. Oh, <laughs> Just the look on your face was awesome. <laughs> Somebody pooped in their pants. <laughs> Um, okay, coming in at number six, yep. one of my faves, Pearl Jam 10. Oh, that's a Love great Pearl Jam 10. Okay, I agree with one of theirs so far. I know, right? <clears throat> um, number five, The Beatles, Abbey Road. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, number four, Combat Rock by The Clash. Okay. I, uh, I would agree with that. Yeah. That was really good. That I, Yes. I wouldn't rank it maybe so high, but yes, I would agree. Um, number three, Led Zeppelin, but Houses of the Holy. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um, it was their fifth studio album. Yeah. As well as their first that included only original brand new material. So it went platinum 11 times over. Well, I think, I mean, that's when they were at their, their peak. Yeah. That was after... Stairway to Heaven. Though. Yeah, I think it was. All that jazz. Number two, I, this could be sort of rock opera. Pink Floyd, Dark Side of the Moon. Sure, but I don't know if it would be considered, I don't think it would be. Could, Each I would, song's a little different. I would completely agree with. But if you look at when they put it all into a movie, it all worked together. Well, in a weird sort of way. Yeah. I would. <laughs> oh, no, are you? Th- no, you're thinking The Wall. Oh, I am thinking The Wall. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. not Dark Side of the no. Moon. Yeah. The Wall, yes, would I guess would be a rock opera. Yeah, sure. I would say. And the number one top rock album of all time, Bruce Springsteen, Born to Run. What? You're making that up. No, that's what they have. Who are these Born people? Born to Run. They didn't need to get punched in the stomach. That's what needs to happen here. Uh, born to Run? Yeah, not even like Born in the USA. They, they like Thunder Road. Wow. Uh, I don't I don't understand it. Shame on you, top eight list. It hit number three on the Billboard <coughs> charts and has sold more than six million copies in the US, but that's nothing. No. Millie Vanilli doubled that. <laughs> I don't know. Here's what I came up with for rock opera okay. albums. And this is weird. Like I don't even I've never even heard of some of these. Um they're saying Green Day, American Idiot. Sure. I, again and, mm-hmm. and they, they had a big Broadway musical based yep, on Yep, they it did, too. actually, yeah. And then you have the Coolies with Doug. They're an indie rock band. Mm-hmm. Um, here's, here's the nut of the album story. Okay. Back to nuts. The 13 songs unveil an incredibly tongue-in-cheek novel about a skinhead who kills a transvestite short order cook, steals his recipe book, and becomes an overnight celebrity when the cookbook becomes a nationwide bestseller. Really? What the? <coughs> the Cooley? The, the Cooleys, Cooleys, Doug. That, that, wait. They're an indie the, rock album. Group. The name of the, the name of the, is the group Cooleys. is the Cooleys. Name of the album is Doug. Yes. 
<clears throat> okay. Yeah. Oh, leave it. Okay. Let's see if we're going to try to get to this. Continue. <clears throat> Queensryche, Operation Mindcrime. Yeah. 1988. Um, David Bowie, Ziggy Stardust. Oh, sure. Forgot sure. about that back in 1972. Um, this one I've never heard of. The Goats, Tricks of the Shade. Nope. And that came out in 1992. They're a rap. It's a rap album. Let's see. What what does it say? Um, billed as a hip hopra by some pundits, the Philadelphia bred and based trio of Odie, Mad, and Swayzak delivered the magnum opus back in 92. It still remains a pointedly funny examination of the post Reagan era and George H.W. Bush in the White House. Ostensibly the journey of Chicken Little and Hangerhead as they visit Uncle Scam's federally funded welfare and freak show and meet a varied cast of characters including Manny Noriega, Leonard Peltier, wow. Daryl Gates, Stacey Coons, and Roe v. Wade, the Sword Swallower. <laughs> That's actually really clever. So there the, you the go. Goats. So it's like a freak show. The goats. Play on the government. Yeah. And you know what? The Speaking goats. Of- <clears throat> if you want to go the hip hop uh, okay. route, um, do yourself a favor and listen to Deltron 3030. Okay. Deltron, and the name of the the name of the the group, if you will, is Deltron 3030. But it's a single guy, and the name of the album is Deltron 3030. Okay. And Deltron 3030 is Del the Funky Homo Sapien, old rap dude from the early 90s okay also the dude who sang who did the rap part of clint eastwood for the gorillas oh yeah the okay okay sure. <clears throat> awesome rap guy but this deltron 3030 he he he, ta- he he takes on the now, persona the rap of this... guy or the frontman for the gorillas damon damon um damon allard allard nope no 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 okay. no, no, no no the guy it... that just goes in and goes here it is that yep. guy okay yep. okay because Ty just got his album really good. Not yeah. him, but um, Damon, Damon, Damon Allard. Allard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Everyday Robots. Have you heard that song? I have that's it. I'm going to have to check the, it out. That's one of the songs on there. Great song. Anyway, uh, Deltron 3030, awesome hip hop album. I'm typing it in right now. We'll see. The <laughs> last thing I searched was Real Men of Genius Music Budweiser. <laughs> Well, there's a couple songs. Things You Can Do, Positive Contact. Positive Contact is a great song. I'll download that right now. Oh, oh with Mike Patton from Epic. Um, Absol- Faith uh, No for, More. Yep, yep. And, oh. and actually, and, and the, the, the dudes that worked on this album with Dell yeah. was um, um, Danger Mouse. Okay. And, um, oh, God, man. <clears throat> Not going to remember his name, but uh, that dude also uh, did a side project with Danger Mouse called um, Handsome Boy Modeling School. Oh, which what? is which? Handsome Boy Modeling School <laughs> yeah. did a song with uh, Mike Patton. Also did a song with uh, uh, John Oates, which was weird, which was awesome. Um, what? Yeah, too funny. Mike, Mike. Mike the Dan the Automator. Dan the Automator was the third dude. Gotcha. <laughs> like, a bunch of random names I'm gonna just throw out at you. Dan the Automator. Deltron thirty thirty. Google these folks. Handsome It'll boy change modeling your life. Club. Handsome boy modeling school is great. And the, the they got the name from the old uh, Chris Elliott sitcom back in the nineties. I can't remember. Oh, what it get was. a life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He he Chris Elliott was going to go away to the handsome, handsome boy, boy modeling, modeling school. school. <laughs> <laughs> and actually the the first uh, handsome boy modeling school album has uh clips from Get a Life. Really? Yeah, uh, intermixed in there. It's great. I'm going to have to check it out. Yeah. Okay, let's Sorry. see some more that rock operas. <laughs> Harry Nelson, The Point. Mm. 1970. Okay. Yeah. He had um it's apparently the story of the adventures of Oblio, a baby born with a round head. <laughs> Boy, you had me at round headed right. baby. I'm sold. Sold. 
Um, Pretty Things by SF, or Pretty Things, SF Sorrow. So SF Sorrow by Pretty Things. 1968 Whoa. is when that first came out. They're England. They're an England band, Pretty Things. Let's see, next, Willie Nelson, The Red-Headed Stranger. Was a was a <gasps> was a was a rock opera is apparently. Um, oh sure, they didn't they make a movie on that though too. The Yellow Rose of Texas. Or, yeah, I, I sort of remember that. I don't know. I saw it like a hundred times. Then. I loved For Willie real? Nelson. In there. I did seriously. I was like six or seven. Was when Diane that came out. Cannon in that? Yes, movie? she played like his wife. Yeah, and he had a girlfriend, Amy, um, that traveled with him, toured with him. Was Chris so Christopherson was his wife. in that yes. movie? Yes. He was in, God, I had such a crush on Chris Christopherson and Willie Nelson. What is wrong with me? I was like seven. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's see. Frank Zappa, Joe's Garage. Okay. Um, let's see. I think there's one more page here. Pink Floyd, The Wall. Mm-hmm. There we go. Genesis, The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. I didn't know that one was one. The Who, Quadrophenia, came out in 1973. That's the last one. Oh. So it goes, nice. it goes with The Who's Tommy. That came out four years before that one. So Okay. Hmm. There you go. Rock operas. I love that. Love it. I'm still a fan of the story song. You give me a good story song, God, I yep. eat it up. Yep. Like uh, one of the groups I had in here... Um. Next to the tracks. I talk to them all the time still. They're, they're right now. They're playing House of Blues in Los Angeles. But when they were here in town, I had them in the studio, and they played the song 110 Len about a guy who got a knife from his girlfriend, killed a bear with it, but then it was his ultimate demise. Gets stabbed with it himself. I'm like, wow. I am enthralled in this story. <laughs> Why did you stop with the story? Why did the song uh, end? Can't, can't there be a part yes. two of this song? <laughs> I, I am a sucker for a good story song. Yeah. Night the Lights Went Out in Georgia. Billy Don't Be a Hero. Those songs um, in the 70s were great. Living on a Prayer. <laughs> That's true. Living on a Prayer is a great story sure song. Sure it is. Jack oh. and Diane. Yes. I love that. Yeah. Tell me a story. Weave me a tale in four minutes or less. Sit down. I will cover up with a blanket and listen. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> coming up next. And SOS. And if there's a song you want to hear, email me, Stacy at URLradio.net. That's S T A C Y at URLradio.net.